Welcome back. I hope everybody had a fantastic holiday and, a, and looking forward to a great year. We have a couple of great presenters today. We have Ms. Callie Ray and Cheyenne Campos. They're going to come and tell us a little bit about busy friends. So without further ado, let us welcome Callie Ray and Cheyenne. Ladies, it's all yours. Hi, everyone. In case you're wondering, I'm 15 and Callie Ray is 13. And we are so thankful to, for this opportunity to present our two businesses. And one is a for-profit back bomb and sub company, which um, helps support our nonprofit 501c3, which provides local kids with new socks and shoes. It all began in 2012 when my mom was approached by a woman who um, insisted we should be in commercials and it just went from there. We were on television and commercials such as Bojangles, Trinet, and GE, and PBS Kids, and many other companies. There was Arby's and Krispy Kreme, and we were even hired for Belk's fashion shows. And we were in a lot of print ads for health companies. And that's Krispy Kreme. And we were in Arby's and many more. And today you can still see Shine on the side of a Wonder Bread truck. Look how tiny she was back then. <laughs> and our parents didn't want us to be, what's it called? Um, our parents didn't want us to be, to let the fame go to our heads. They wanted to stay, they wanted us to stay grounded and humbled. So in 2018, we used our modeling and acting money to start giving back form hugs, a 501c3 nonprofit organization with our mom's help, of course. And at first, we got donations and assembled book bags with school supplies. And that also included handwritten notes of encouragement to each student in those book bags. And in 2019, we held our first Choose for the Soul event. And provided 358 students, along with 17 of their siblings, at Walker Spivey Elementary with new socks, shoes, and other goodies. And the Sheriff's Department and the Detention Center which kind of helped us wash kids' feet. And each child left with a new footwear and a new spring in their step. Due to the pandemic, we were not able to hold a, another event in 2020 and 21. But we will be holding the same shoes for the Soul event on, at Ferguson Easley on April 12, 2022. The other problem the pandemic caused was it dried up our donations. And so last summer, we launched a for-profit company to fund our nonprofit organization. And Fizzy Friends was created. We make and sell all natural bath bombs. And you haven't lived until you had Dragon Snot. Dragon Snot is our best seller, which is currently being trademarked. There's a lot of bath bombs out there that, there's a lot of bath bombs out there, but Fizzy Friends has something inside of it. The reason why it's, be, it's called a hidden treasure is because everybody has a hidden treasure inside of them. And that is ranging, what we mean by hidden treasure um, is ranging from jewelry, action figures, and there's even money inside. And what we sell our, we sell our products at special events and farmers markets. And we have made $24,207 in sales in our first five months. In case you're wondering, 100% of the profits from Fizzy Friends goes back into giving back warm hugs. We do not take any salaries. Our parents do not run our business. And me and my sister run our business. We make our bath bombs. We create each new product. We develop marketing. We sell our products. And we dream of the official events for our nonprofit. We do everything except we need our mom for the official registration and to drive us to meetings and events. And when we go to farmer's markets like Dirtbag, she's the whole punch lady, where she sits quietly in the back of the booth, punches our frequently um, customers' cards, and she says she enjoys watching us live our dream. And today she's been promoted to Chief Slide Clicker. So thanks, Mom. One of our biggest problems is space for products. Busy Friends has taken over 55% of our home. And that includes production, storage, packaging, shipping, and the materials and all that other business stuff. We are so thankful that our dad is very talented. He is building us a new shop in the backyard. When completed, it will be a 480 square feet designed to help accommodate our business needs 
That's a little more than three times the size of an average bedroom. Our short-term goal is increasing our sales through uh, website traffic so we can sell more products. And to win grants, pitch contests, and to refine our business opportunities, improve our bookkeeping, purchasing, and marketing processes. And to gain more exposure for busy fights and giving back one hugs. Some people might say our long-term goal is too ambitious. And we plan to make busy friends and giving back warm hugs worldwide. And eventually around the globe through chapters. And by 2032, we are planning to impact 1 million kids. Our PR and social media will be primarily our outreach, but word of mouth is just as important. Donations and volunteers are important too. And we are getting more and more good press locally. We would appreciate it if you help spread the word about Fizzy Friends and the charitable work it supports. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and next time you're considering buying a gift, please consider Fizzy Friends. And of course, we welcome donations, whether they're monetary, contributional, or just volunteers as your time. Both are appreciated. By the way, you'll be seeing us on campgrounds later this year. And as Dr. Keen has agreed to host Giving Back Warm Hugs for this November for our new Christmas Blessings event. Giving Back Warm Hugs will be giving bikes away and other goodies to children who otherwise will not have Christmas this December. So keep an eye out for more information and be prepared to donate, volunteer for this fun educational event. And we are looking to stay in touch. Thank you so much for this opportunity, guys. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I certainly feel like a slacker um, compared to this. Um, uh, the girls also have uh, done a number of interesting things. There was a uh, situation they are aware of where a young lady did not have a, could not afford a dress for her prom. And so they designed a dress, other people heard about, saw it, and uh, next thing you know, they were presenting their collection at the New York, uh, London, and Paris uh, Fashion Weeks. So um, uh, I, I don't know if I'm the only one, but I really feel like a slacker when I um, um, look at all that they've accomplished. And um, their mom and dad have been a big part of it, especially their mom, but uh, the girls actually do the business themselves. So amazing. Congratulations, girls, and thank you very much for presenting. Thank, thank you again. so much, Mr. Ken. Thank you. And thank you guys for this amazing opportunity. We really do appreciate it. We're going to now field questions or suggestions for the young ladies. So please feel free to chime in. If your microphone is not working or you're just a little microphone shy, you can always type in the chat and we will relay that to them. But please um, feel free to offer suggestions or ask questions. I want to say I'm impressed. Uh, I thought you were, you handled yourselves very well. Um, the only thing I heard that I would kind of caution you, you mentioned toward the end that um, you want to grow and expand and potentially like give bikes and that kind of thing. Um, in our area, we do have someone who already gives the bikes for Christmas. I love, love, love what you're doing about the shoes and socks and things like that because there are a lot of kids who need things like that. And I think um, that was one of the points for me that struck um, so well in my heart is that um, it's easy to give a kid a bike, but a bike does not keep your feet warm or allow you to go to school. Um, so I love the fact that you are focusing on more essential items. So while it sounds good and kids would love bikes, you know, if you've already got someone in your community who will do that, Look for the essentials that you you mentioned before, because that really will bring in the donations and the people who will go out and buy the Fizzy Friends just to help you out. Because you are touching an area where kids need help. And a lot of people assume in today's world that, oh, everybody has shoes and socks. No, they don't. And there are some kids that need that kind of thing. They need the more essential things like you are providing. So I'd say stay true to your cause. 
Um, you don't have to get flashy or, you know, that to get people's attention. Because to me, in this day and age, that it's much more reaches my heart that you're doing things that help those kids. Because I have a family of um, teachers, and one of them teaches in elementary school, and she will tell you, not every kid has the very essentials. They do not. So I applaud you, and I say keep on trucking. Thank, Thank you so you. much for your advice. Jean Burns, I'm, I'm like you. I am super impressed, young ladies. I really, really am. So you, you mentioned your bath bombs, and they're like in the farmer's market. What, what do they retail for? I mean, what, is your, what, what do they cost? If I wanted to purchase one, how much? So our prices are $6 at dirt bags and online. Yes, but we do have bath bombs that range from $8 as well because it's a bigger bath bomb. Okay, so six to eight dollars. Does that include the one with the money? Yes, yes ma'am. It does. Okay. All right. Um, we have a couple of questions in the chat that I wanted to ask. Um, Sunny wants to know: Are you guys on on TikTok? So we have started a TikTok. Orders. So we have started a TikTok, and we were actually thinking of doing the whole packaging orders things um, for the behind the scenes. Yeah. Great. Great advice. Excellent. Do you take donations? And if so, where, where and how would you go about donating? So you would go to the Giving Back Warm Hugs page and it'll say donate. Or you can go on to our website, fizzyfriends.com and donate there as well. And Velveeta would like to know how, who helped you um, with your brand? Uh, Mr. Ken. Mr. Mr. Ken. Ken helped a lot. Okay. And Mr. Ken is actually helping us trademark Dragon Snot. Yes. Okay. So, so John wants to know, he says he may have missed it, but did, he wants to know, did you get your start in modeling? Oh, so we got our started in modeling when we were four and six years old. We were at Disney World and my mom was approached by a lady who uh, insisted we should be in commercials and it just went from there. We went to this agency and the agency scammed us and then um, somehow um, we went to a workshop. Yeah, we went to a workshop and then we got noticed by uh, Jay Purvis and then it just went from there. You mentioned that uh, Mr. Hill has been very helpful with you guys. Did you participate in the youth entrepreneurship camp by chance? Yes, ma'am. No, mm -hmm. Oh, no, not no. the camp. No. Oh, camp. You didn't no. the camp. But the rural entrepreneurship class we did. Okay, I was wondering how you got connected with that. So um, I'm so super impressed by you guys. I would strongly encourage you to tell people your age about this because, you know, a lot of people think kids don't have great ideas and they do. And if we can help them get started early, even better. So, yes. and I think you can't for all the things that you've done with them. And I love the idea of the Dragon Snot. I mean, that's, that's just so cool. So Dragon Snot is actually a moldable body wash. So if you look at it, it looks like a liquid, but once you scoop it up in your hand, you could roll it into a ball and wash your body with it. But once you let it sit in your hand, it'll ooze down like slime, but it's an actual body wash. And so me and Shaina actually have sensitive skin because we have eczema and psoriasis. And my uncle actually has it so bad where he has to take injections. So not only is it for people who have sensitive skin like me and Cheyenne, um, it's going to our charity as well. Ladies, you mentioned your, your, your nonprofit and where you saw yourself in five years. Where do you see fizzy friends in five years? I would say like growing as big as um, our charity because that's what pays to go to the charity and still keeping it for not only to make it like give the parents a nice easy day even if it's just for 10-15 minutes just giving the parents that peace and quiet and that just time to themselves and also to make bath time easier yes yeah, so we want to take busy friends where like all the way up to where our charity is
Latoya would like to know what do you, what was the most difficult part while you were starting your business? Trying to figure out what ingredients to put inside of it because most of the bath bombs, me and Shine can't use bath bombs, like I said, because we have sensitive skin. So just trying to figure out the ingredients, how to cut down production, and just things like that. So I'd say production-wise, learning how to do the mixtures and just figuring everything out. I think to come up with the idea of products and, um, yeah, I would say products. Latoya followed up and said, since you ladies make bath bombs, did you have to get any clearance or license to create or sell a cosmetic item? Yes, it was a, it was a big process and insurance as well. And so we actually bought a pill press and what we would do with the pill press, we would make these tiny capsules to try and, so it would be little capsules and they would called drag and drop links. And what we thought, it was a whole process we would just sprinkle it in and it'll fizz up. Well, we got a call from the FDA and they came to our house actually. It's actually the DEA? DEA. Yeah, it was because of the machine. Oh, please tell us more. I'm intrigued by that. What happened when they came to your door? So we get our, um, because we need citric acid, which is also things they use in sour candy, because all of the bath bombs actually have that inside of them. So, and that's all the way in Raleigh, I think it is. It's in Raleigh. And so we drive over there, and then we're driving back, and we're probably 30 minutes away from our house. And so we get a call saying, hey, uh, we're doing a check-in. Are you guys at your house? And we're like, no, we're not at our house. We just picked up citric acid. And so they're like, okay, well, we're gonna be over at your house in 20 minutes. As soon as we get to our house, they're there in like two minutes. Like they just pulled right around the corner. And so what, that's when we had the, um, the citric acid inside of the house. And so there was like five people outside on this side of the door and on the back side of our gate. It was so scary, but then they came in and then they just did a check-in and it was so funny because they came out with little pink bags because the way I explained it is Lilo and Stitch, they look like Cobra bubbles to me. And they just had to figure out why we were using a pro press for it. Please feel free to jump in. Anybody in the audience who'd like to ask a question or make a comment? Or suggestion? Morgan has a question. She wants to know what the pricing is on the dragon saw. Her daughter would love it. So it's eight dollars online, but in markets it's seven. So tell us a little bit more about how you actually market your product, what you're doing right now. Excuse me? Tell us a little bit more about how you're marketing your product. What are you doing? What channels are you using right now? So we, uh, like, what do we use? Do we still like Square? We market oh, how products. do we market? Yeah. Uh, we do it, uh, we look at our products and we double it. And then we look at, like, other competitors and what they have. And that's how we market. So we double the product by um, the ingredients, and then we look at other competitors and we market. How are you getting the word out about your product? Let me phrase it that way. Uh, word of mouth and social media through Instagram and Facebook. So making sure we keep up with the constant posts as well. So we also have another question from Morgan. She wants to know where are the market markets located um, that you display your products? So where can you find them? So some are at Dirtback Ales, um, which is a brewery uh, where there's a whole bunch of people and it's just an amazing community. 
There's Carolina Lakes. Yes. There's, there's Dogwood a, Festivals. Yes. So we also go to Carol. Oh yeah, you already said Carolina Lakes. And also, um, we're in two boutiques. One is downtown on Hay Street. It's called A Bit of Carolina. Our products are in that store, but if you don't want to pay for shipping, you could, um, we'll take your order, we'll drop it off there, and you guys could just pick it up. And we're also in the front porch as well. And that's in Hope Mills. Laura wants to know um, who are some of your competitors? Who are your competitors? I would say um, probably Lush mm -hmm. is one of them. Um, the Bomb is one of them as well. And I can't think of any more. I think those are the only two. I think those are the only two. And Ms. Carol would like to know how many posts do you average each day on your social media? Site? Only one. So we try to do one post a day. One post a day. And with TikTok, um, we could use that as well for the packaging order and just behind the scenes as well. So those can be constant videos. But we are making those right now. So we also have another comment. Um, do you do you travel to Raleigh? They have yearly expos where people come and sell products. Yes, ma'am. Um, we travel all over North Carolina as well. Have you thought about contacting like places like Mike's Farm? So it's really a family um, gathering. They have a restaurant, but they have a store with many different unique products. Um, have you ever contacted them to see if they would be interested? I'm sure they would. Where it's are they located? Beulahville, believe it or not. Where are they located? In Beulahville, it's called Mike's Farm. Thank you. Ms. Campbell would like for you to post the slide with your website info again, please, as well. What do you think The dragon star? Do we have any questions for Kelly Ray and Cheyenne? Comments? Suggestions? I'd like to know about how much can you produce at a time? What's your, your inventory level like? So before we all say, you know, go here and and see if you can sell your product, how much can you um, handle at a time? I would say a seven batches of bath bombs. That's like a, a day. And there's like probably, you can make 20 bath bombs out of the batches. And for dragon snot, you can probably make um, 10 bottles of dragon snot at one time. When you said seven batches, how many is in a batch? Seven batches is probably 20. And that's all in one day. And for the prizes, we also, excuse me? No, go ahead. Oh, I said in prizes as well to keep, um, to make sure we don't over like do the prizes. We have them in eight cards, so we can keep track of that as well. And so do you are random. So some will be money, slime, jewelry, action figures, which would be like Ninja Turtles and like different action figures like that. Yes, yeah, so everybody gets a chance of winning money. 
Is there a shelf life on a product like this where after a certain amount of time it will start to disintegrate or anything of that no, nature? No, no ma'am. Because when Ms. Rescher was talking about some of the places, I, I'm immediately thinking of something like a, a Cracker Barrel, you know, their little retail store they do um, outside of their restaurant. Yes, sir. I'm so, places like that. Excuse me. So, our products are actually being um, to get in our way into Walmart. Yes, so they're getting approved. That's going to definitely increase yeah. your. So we've done all the work and the DUNS number. And so now we're just um, trying to set up a meeting with Miss Tammy to get our products actually into Walmart and figuring out all that stuff. So John has a question. He wants to know, have you stepped away from modeling and gone strictly to focusing on the business or businesses? Um, his son's been modeling for three years now and he started uh, working on a plan for his long-term goals, which involves helping the homeless. How can, how can we get involved to help your nonprofit? Uh, so we do have we would need volunteers whenever we do events like Shoes for the Soul or um, for on the campus this year for December or our big backpack um, giveaway. So at the beginning of the school year, we'll have a big kickball bash where there's a huge barbecue and the kids get free book bags, they get school supplies as well. But at the beginning of the school year, they also, all the kids get free haircuts to make them feel nice. So we could need volunteers for just helping out passing waters, passing book bags as well. Yes, so our main thing is volunteers. And we will post um, we will post you when we need help as well. Ladies, what's been your greatest challenge? And how have you overcome that challenge? I would say marketing. Marketing. Marketing would be our trying to have challenge. a constant flow of things. Yes. And how we oversee that is just coming up with new ideas. Yes. And also, the word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I have a, um, first of all, I, I just want to congratulate you on, on what you've accomplished so far. I just, you know, I'm with Kent. I, um, it's, I, I feel like an underachiever and, and, and I stay pretty busy. Uh, you know, initially, I had, you'd mentioned, as I was listening to you, I was wondering just how you're going to keep up with the marketing aspect of this in expanding your product line. And, uh, and, and you just chimed in on that a second ago, but you brought up Walmart. Um, uh, let me go back to uh, Ms. Burns' uh, question with regard to your production capabilities. Uh, how much can you, how many of these bobs can you produce in a month's period? We do about a thousand a week, so that's four thousand for a month. Okay, so you're approaching Walmart. I assume not to just uh, do a local store, but to hopefully that they'll pick this up. Uh, are you ready to actually find a producer that can do this at a cheaper price? Yes, ma'am, and we're actually going to make it ourselves because that's what we do with all of our products. You're going to make it yourself, but you're going to ramp up your production in your new facilities here? Yes, sir. Uh, and do you know how you, do you know, do you have a program on how to get to that point where you can produce uh, tens of thousands versus so, a thousand a week? With the money that we're trying to raise, we're gonna buy um, a whole bunch of mixers and we actually reached out to two programs in Cumberland County to get, um, to get- Apologies. Let me kill my phone here, all right? And All right, go ahead. So it's a program that um, in schools, they could package your stuff and help with your business as well. When are you going to start paying yourselves? Um, with a whole different other company that we're producing. But none of these go to us. We don't take a percentage out. And besides, we already get paid with 
everyone just smiling and enjoying our things and helping others. The thing that we get paid is modeling and acting. Okay, that bothers me as an entrepreneur. I like to get paid, uh, but I think you're doing a fantastic job. I did a study on um, uh, the characteristics of entrepreneurs uh, in determining whether uh, being an entrepreneur is a talent or a skill. And uh, I think you guys have proven uh, uh, what I came up with, and that is that you need a talent to be an entrepreneur, and both of you seem to have it. Uh, if you look at every successful entrepreneur, you'll notice one thing is that they started a business under the age of 10. And I think you guys are well on your way to being successful. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. One of the audience members wants to know, how do you keep up with your schoolwork and the business? So what we used to do is me and Shine used to do our homework in the morning because me and Shine are homeschooled. And so <clears throat> with our program, we would do it in the morning. But now we work in the morning and we and Shine choose to work in the morning. And then we do our work and we try to speed through it. We do our homework in the afternoon, in the evening. And uh... Someone else wants to know, how long did it take you to develop your initial business plan and have you revised it since you started or you created? Yes, we're always revising it. And it probably took us a week. I would say a week. Did you do that in Mr. Kent's class? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma and once you start trying, if you get this deal with Walmart and you do, obviously gonna have to increase your production. Um, do you plan on hiring some people to help you? Yes, ma'am. Um, so in Cumberland County, we reached out to two people and it's to hire students. And by and students, do you mean people your age or do you mean uh, people that are like in college or both? Um, so what we want to do is we could do our age, we can do older. And so what we actually want to do with our students is um, for people on the special needs spectrum, because I feel like that always gets overlooked. And so um, my mom actually worked for Crest and she would tell these amazing stories about all of these amazing people. And so why not give them jobs as well? And when you get ready to start hiring people, you see the lady in the box with all the books behind her, Miss Campbell, I would reach out to her and let her class help you develop some uh, materials for hiring because that's what her, her program does. It's all about um, human resources and she can, uh, uh, their classes can assist you with developing some of that stuff that you're going to need. She, they're very good at it and they do it as a class project so you don't have to go out and hire somebody to do all this stuff for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yeah. She'll, she will remember you, trust me. <clears throat> and the uh, her counterpart's somewhere in here. I saw, unless she had to exit out, but her, um, the other one, Ms. Fleming was here earlier, so she can help you as well. They work together. And um, Mr. Kent, somebody wants to know, how do they get their children signed up for one of these classes? I put some uh, registration information in there before. Um, you know, we do have children, obviously, that attend. Um, with a parent uh, and you know they just have to be uh, really focused because uh, it's a workshop it's not you know sit and listen and absorb information uh, it's actually taking tools and information and working through your business plan <coughs> so it's very much a workshop so uh, if that's appropriate then um, they, uh, their parent needs to sign up. I'll put the links in there again, uh, or Athena probably will beat me to it. She always does. Um, uh, but um, the first class starts uh, February 1st uh, for the real entrepreneurship class at six, and it could go as long as three hours. And uh, the tuition is $125, includes everything, but it's nine classes and it's uh, fairly intense because you have to 
go through and develop a mini business plan and turn it into a pitch. Uh, the idea is to be ready to go into pitch contests and try to win some of that seed capital. And you know those pitch contests range from $500 to 100,000. Uh, there's one out now for veterans and military that's um, top prize is 100,000 thanks to USAA. So uh, obviously it's tough competition. So gotta have a good plan and good presentation. but the real class will meet each Tuesday evening. Hopefully in person, who knows, with COVID. We try to keep the group relatively small um, so that you know, we can actually get work done. Um, it's not just a informational class. Thank you for that, Kent. Um, anybody else have a question or a suggestion to for these young ladies to help them progress their business? I have a question for the group, and unfortunately, Don Matheson is not here today. But uh, we have some other uh, good minds in the crowd. So, uh, what are some ways other than social media that they might be able to reach uh, parents, grandparents? Um, you know, to sell more of the bath bombs and other products to increase the donations. Whitney's chimed in and said school fairs, we have uh, mail flyers, we have newspaper, news channels, flea markets, swap meets. Um, I'm thinking of um, usually around before Christmas, around Thanksgiving, um, they will have like holiday fairs and stuff like that, where people tend to do a lot of um, gift purchases at that point. Um, you might even team up with, with a local school uh, as a part of a fundraiser for them, where they're trying to raise money for certain projects. So they might take out, you know, like they sell everything from chocolate to wrapping paper to whatever. At least this would be something fun that kids would like. And, you know, those kids are going to go hit up the um, grandparents and the parents to buy it. So that might, you might team up with the local school. We also great idea. And uh, great ideas from everybody coming in. Um, um, I, I have a quick question. Do you um, see yourself that possibly you could add um, 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 a scent? that would be appropriate for say moms and grandmothers uh, for Mother's Day and just kind of do a little blitz out there for that. I'm yes. thinking like lavender or something like that. So for people who don't take baths and they actually take showers, mm -hmm. um, we have things called shower fizzers where mm -hmm. you can have lavender, eucalyptus or lemongrass. Okay. Yeah. On the bottom of your shower or where your soap goes, when the water hits it, it'll clear up your sinuses. Yes, yeah, so okay. we have lavender, eucalyptus, and lemongrass. I need to go back to the website. I did. I missed that one. Thank you. Y'all are doing great, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, the business is uh, only a few months old, and so it's uh, very much in early stages of development. So. All these thoughts and ideas are incredibly helpful. Um, right now, it's about as pliable as dragon snot um, as it gets molded into, you know, a, um, a sustainable growing company. But these ideas are really, really helpful, and I, I appreciate them. And we have the drop zones interested in assisting with the fundraiser as well. Awesome. Think, Thank you, Kalisha. I think one of the things that I love is not only your entrepreneurial spirit and for someone your age that you've gone out and created not only a nonprofit, but a, a for-profit business to support the nonprofit, but I love your heart to the right place that you actually want to give back, that you're not just, you know, trying to make some money to, you know, go have fun, whatever, whatever, but you actually have a great cause as well. 
So I celebrate not only your entrepreneurship spirit, but your heart of wanting to give and to give to people who um, are less fortunate. I think that is outstanding. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to toss an idea out to the group. Um, we haven't been able to do it because of COVID, but we thought about having a Christmas fair here on campus. Uh, and it, was, it would be made up of our small business center clients that have products that might be appropriate as gifts or stocking stuffers. Um, obviously something like Fizzy Friends would be a really cool thing if you have kids or adults who are kids at heart um, as stocking stuffers, but um, does anybody in the group have any thoughts or ideas about if we had a Christmas fair? You've got a few months to think about it. So, you know. Um, I like the idea that you have unique things that we offer. I would extend it not only to your um, clients, uh, but when we tried something very early on years ago, when we were first starting to talk about entrepreneurship here, um, we found that there are a lot of students and faculty who also, and staff who also have things they do and make on the side. And they were wanting to get tables as well. So I would broaden that. And then I would also involve like clubs, like, you know, how the culinary club did their pie mm -hmm. sale this time. You always got people who you'd be surprised their hidden talents. Yep. I didn't think about either of those things, the faculty and staff and students or the culinary club. I'm not fully caffeinated this morning. So thank you. Well, I love that idea, Kent, um, by the way. Um, do we have any further questions for Callie, Ray, and Cheyenne? Sunny wants to know, are you on Etsy? Uh, yes, ma'am, but the traffic is actually very, very slow there, so that's why we have our Wix page, which is our website. I'm going to take the last questions, ladies. Um, by the way, I am super, super impressed. Um, what can this community do for you? How can we help? Spread the word. Um, if you could just tag us in things, just word to mouth would be amazing. And volunteers? Oh, and volunteers and promote the company and the charity. Yes, and like Mr. Kent said, volunteers. Volunteers is a big thing. Well, thank you ladies very, very much. Um, we'll definitely be in touch. Um, Kent, I'm gonna, I know you had a few things you wanted to mention. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to you. Um, well, they've all come up. Um, first of all, okay. thank you for all the great ideas. And I appreciate the opportunity that um, the girls, uh, Fizzy Friends, and Giving Back Warm Hugs had uh, to share their ideas and get all this really good feedback. So thank you, everyone, uh, for attending on a cold Wednesday morning. And um, appreciate your help and support. And everybody's heard about the real program and it's all covered. So we're good. And Ken, if you'll send me that information via email, I have some students that would definitely be interested. I would love to push that out um, for you as well. Um, I appreciate it. Ladies, I really appreciate it. Is there anything else going on in the community that anybody would like to talk about before we go?
Well, if not, I hope to see each one of you back next week. We've got a great presenter. We have Oculi that is going to come and tell us a little bit about their business next week. Um, so I hope to see you then. Thanks so much for coming and spending um, this morning with us, um, with these impressive young ladies. Um, again, I hope to see you back next week. Y'all have a fantastic week. Stay warm. Yes. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I didn't hear the name of the company next week. Oculi. O-C-U-L-I. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Cool. Uh, That'll be good. Yeah. That'll um, be good. They're a fantastic company as well. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope you guys are too. Come back and um, help support small business and entrepreneurship in our community. We'll see you next week. Have a great week. Stay warm, you guys. Thanks Thank again, you. everyone. Thank, Thank you for inviting us. Thank you so much for this opportunity. and Thank you for the advice. Thank you so much.